What are cryptocurrencies? Hey, hey, hey. What are NFTs? A non-fungible token. Time to buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin just seems like a scam. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, Bitcoin? Welcome to On The Ledger. We are very, very fortunate to be joined in our Paris Ledger offices by the one and only Tim Draper. Terrific. Ian, thanks for having me. I'm thrilled. I love my ledgers. They're doing great. Everything's good. It's all solid. Well, thank you for being here. And you just got a tour of the of the Donjon, you know, without giving away any secrets. How, how was it? I am far more secure about wh where I'm holding a lot of my tokens. And, uh, and I feel really good about the team there and what they're doing and uh, how they're looking at making sure the ledger is infinitely dependable. So I, I want to come back to that in one second because you had a, a, a tweet that I want to I wanna mention um, last Saturday. But first, for our audience who doesn't know who you are, how do you describe yourself? Oh, I'm a venture capitalist. I, um, I invest in startups, uh, mostly technology, almost exclusively technology startups. And, uh, and in building my venture firm, it's called Draper Associates, I, um, I have done some interesting marketing things and those marketing things to attract more deal flow, more uh, more investors, more whatever, um, are one, I started a university, Draper University of Heroes, to em encourage entrepreneurs to go for it and try things and make mistakes and go. Uh, and then I started Meet the Drapers, which was a TV show that I did with my dad and my sister and a few of my kids. and. Um, and we interview entrepreneurs, and now that show uh, reaches tens of millions of people. Uh, so we didn't realize it was going to be such a big deal, but now it is. And so we're really excited about what that's going to do for us and for venture capital long term. Anyway, my, my mission in life has always been to spread entrepreneurship and venture capital around the world. And uh, it's been a fascinating career. And you've also been outspoken uh, advocate for Bitcoin for many years. So what what drew you there and and where are we on that journey? So I look at Bitcoin as an anthropological leap forward. It's uh, we went from gold to or, or from shells to gold, from gold to the promise of gold from the promise of gold to the promise of silver or other rare metals. And then it was just the full faith and credit of a government. And now all of a sudden you've got uh, a trusted third party that is um, decentralized and open and transparent. It's a whole new, uh, it's, it's another leap. And I think humanity is going to be uh, that extra level of trust is going to make humanity wealthier. I think the whole world will become wealthier just as it was wealthier when it went from shells to gold. Uh, so this is a, um, you know, I had already had an amazing career. I invested in a lot of the early internet companies and, uh, and I was thinking, oh, well, I, I got lucky. I hit the internet just right and things have gone very well. And then, I thought, well, I'll, these will be my waning years. And then all of a sudden, Bitcoin hit and I went, oh, my God, this is bigger. It's a bigger deal than anything I've ever seen before. Uh, and so it's going to be very, it's, I mean, in the startup world, we see transitions from paper to computers, from computers to software, from software to the Internet, from the Internet to marketplaces, whatever. Um, and each time the world has to go through uh, painful change. Uh, and now with money, it's an even more painful change because somehow the governments have started to use money to control their people. And they're realizing they're going to lose that control. And so they're trying to cling to that old control. And I think that's not 
healthy. I think the best governments are the ones that trust their people and set them free. And the worst governments are the ones that try to control people. Uh, you know, it's the difference between South and North Korea. South Korea, they trust their people. They set them free. North Korea, they try to control everything. And uh, that's been a 70-year experiment where North Korea was, was uh, Marxist, Leninist, uh, communist, socialist, government control. Government tells everybody what to do, and they all just do it. Uh, and then South Korea was a capitalist, open, free market, uh, free speech uh, country. And um, they had about an equal number of people in both of those two countries. And we've had a 70-year experiment. And uh, today, the average South Korean makes 460 times what the average North Korean makes. Uh, and that's when adjusted for purchasing power. Uh, the North Koreans are like the government counts out 24 kernels of corn and that's lunch. Um, and the average South Korean is now four inches taller than the average North Korean. So there is this trust that is needed. Uh, people, people live up to the trust you give them. I'm, I'm in the business of trust. I invest in people. I, I, I hand money over. And I say, I have great faith in you. You're going to do something great. And I'm counting on it. And they live up to that trust. They'll, they'll do whatever possible to make that happen. Well, now we have a currency that is now trustworthy, not reliant on a central force of any kind. And we, I think that that completely transforms the planet. I agree with you. And what I don't see is exactly what happens between here and there. And maybe to your point, how much pain there is between here and there. You know, as Balaji would say, you know, as humanity, we've, we've moved from God to state and maybe we move from state to network. Um, you know, but, but there was bloodshed between God and state. And, um, and, and the question is, you know, how, how do we get to that other piece? You, you know, when, when was your... Well, there's already bloodshed. Uh, Russia and Ukraine, I, you know, I would argue that the the wall, the trade war between U.S. and China, the Russian-Ukraine war, were all bad governance trying to flex their muscles, saying we still matter in a time when we humans are all realizing that we are mobile, we can cross borders. We, uh, we have a, now a currency that is global uh, in Bitcoin uh, and others. And we're, uh, we're, we are moving to a network world. And uh, that network world, governance has to start thinking of it itself as a service. And it needs to compete with other governments. It needs to provide good service or people will leave that govern governance and go to another one. Uh, so governments now have to be accountable to their people or those people leave or they, they take their money and their businesses and their families elsewhere. Um, and the good governments, the, the ones that are trusting and set people free, those are the ones that are attracting all of the businesses now. And, uh, and it's difficult for big governments to adjust to that because big governments are kind of the winners of the last game. And as winners of the last game, they, they feel like I, I can, I, I'm just wanting to hold on to this trophy because it, it was so great for so long. Well, now some of these little governments are kind of going, hey, you know, we can, El Salvador just sort of says, hey, we can be the Bitcoin country. Well, they, that may mean that El Salvador is the wealthiest country in the world in 40 years. You know, Malta, Gibraltar, Japan made Bitcoin a national currency. They, they kind of opened the, the floodgates. And, uh, and so some of these smaller governments have the possibility to be extraordinary in the next generation. Dubai is now completely opened up. Uh, and so 
the world is starting to see this movement of new free and trusted places on the earth. And I think eventually they'll all be free and trusted, but for a while there will be so-called leaders uh, who are trying to keep it the way it is. And a lot of people do uh, have trouble with change. I, I tend to thrive on it, but other people have trouble with it. Um, and I guess that comes from, I, I'm in the venture capital business. I'm always looking for where's the change going to come. Uh, and that change, that difficulty in dealing with change um, has people sort of clinging to, no, no, this is the way we do it. Uh, no, no, uh, we have to, you know, s stick with our current banking system. No, no, we, we need our, uh, you know, our government to tell us what to do or whatever. Um, and government, and some people in government, um, you know, are their egos are fed by this, like, hey, I get to, um, these people want to be told what to do. I'm happy to tell them what to do. But the great leaders are the ones who, again, trust people and set them free. And it's like, no, you need to be set free so that you can go learn on your own. You can go make a living on your own. You can live on this world. Um, and you can move and grow and thrive in any way you feel see fit. So let's let's you know come back to we're here in Paris today, but you and I are both Americans, and you know the the banking system over the past you know two weeks has seen something that I didn't think I would see in my lifetime, and I assume that you know over the course of your time working in venture capital, you worked closely with Silicon Valley Bank, you know, time and time and time again. Um, you know, I think, and then, you know, after you tweeted, I think on, on that Saturday morning, I woke up and saw your tweet, which said the safest place to store value is Bitcoin on a ledger. Um, and so I'm curious, you know, to, to sort of tie these two ends together, you know, the, the, all of the work that you've done in the U S you know, probably working, you know, directly with Silicon bank, Valley bank, but to where we are today when, you know, tweets, can effectively, you know, spur a, a, a run on the bank, um, and at the same time, consumers and enterprises alike have, you know, the option of, you know, self custody, earning yield with self custody, uh, you know, and 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 having sort of, you know, new money as a technological product, you know, and 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 really the maybe the pain between here and there is the pain that the banking system will go through as that shakes out, and maybe we're seeing some of the beginnings of that, but I'm curious, you know, what, where, where are we, what's going on in your, in your viewpoint? So, um, yeah, it, I did tweet that out and I do believe it actually. Um, because I'm like, I mean, I interview people who are all telling me what the world's going to look like in five to 10 years. And so I usually have that as a picture in my head. So, um, the run on the bank um, by tweet is um, is actually a believe it or not a positive uh, thing that can happen because what it what the power of this tweet media or or the ability to spread the word faster than ever before around the world uh, also allows people to make adjustments faster around the world. And, um, and we're seeing technology um, accelerate over time so that we're in, a, we're in a situation we get more and more uh, exciting technologies and our lives improve at faster and fa faster rates than they ever did before. Um, the idea that a tweet can say, hey, this is a better way to do it than we're all doing it. Uh, that can allow customers to adopt a new product or service faster than ever before. It allows innovators the ability to, uh, to grow a business faster than ever before. And, and so in some ways that's a really positive thing. Now, a run on a, on a bank is a, 
a very difficult thing for people to go through because you get um, the way a bank works is, let's say I have a million dollars and I say, I'll lend you a million dollars. And then you then you say, OK, and you get a million dollars. And I said, just leave it in my bank. So I've still got a million dollars. And then I go lend it to Pascal. And and then he I say and leave it in my bank. And I lend it to somebody else and leave it in my bank, lend it to somebody else, leave it in my bank. I've the, I'm the bank. I've, I've only got a million dollars, but I've lent out four million dollars. Well, if you all want your money all at once, I'm not going to be able to provide it. If you want it the way you normally get it, I will. Well, so that's the way the system has worked for many years, and that's been a system of trust. Uh, what happened, though, uh, I believe that Bitcoin has influenced the way we've all started to think. And by having this alternative, we've been able to wean ourselves a little bit, just a little bit, away from banking. And by doing that, uh, banks are starting to feel the pinch. And once a bank starts getting into trouble, um, the consumers get wind of it quickly through the tweets or whatever, and that can uh, accelerate their failure. And I do expect more banks to fail. Uh, I think in this, I, I mean, UBS just saved uh, Credit Suisse. Um, there will be others, uh, particularly for a couple of reasons. Governments have been printing money and they've been putting it out there. And, uh, and I guess it started with a pandemic. They said, um, you got to stop work. You know, they're forcing people to, you know, stop their restaurants, stop their hotels, stop their sports events, whatever. And, uh, and that cut off that huge economy. And then they said, oh, OK, we'll make it up to you. We'll just print money and send it to you. Well, okay, we've got an economy that's uh, at the U.S. We've got an economy that's 24 trillion. They printed almost 10 trillion dollars. Um, that's like half of a year's economy. So the the dollars that we have are worth less because they've printed so much, so many more of them. And what that means is that we get inflation, and when you get inflation, prices go up. And uh, if it gets out of control, then people lose confidence in, a, in the currency and, uh, and it's downward spiral. And so they need to just stop that. Uh, and so the government has actually created each of these things. And then they raised the interest rates. And they raised them so quickly, rather than raising them when they saw it coming, they raised them way late. And then they had to raise them really quickly. By raising them quickly, they put banks, many banks, in a very difficult position because those banks had were borrowing at, um, or, or were lending at a much lower rate. So th all this, uh, the, so the government has created all of these crises in a row, and mostly because they want to control people. Um, a, f a free government would have said, hey, do what you can. You know, this pandemic's coming through us. Do what you can. See, you know, whatever you can do to protect yourself. And then it wouldn't have had to print money and it wouldn't have had to have all that inflation. It wouldn't have had to um, uh, raise the interest rates like that. And um, in a Bitcoin environment, uh, the, the, um, the whole system is... Um, mechanized. It's all automated. And so no single force, no one government, no central bank can control all, all of that and make those mistakes that our governments have made. And so, uh, so it will be much, a much smoother and, and more uh, exciting economy uh, on a Bitcoin economy than it is on a banking economy, a government and banking economy. And because Bitcoin is decentralized, it's not controlled by one person. That FTX fiasco, that was one person. That might as well have been the central bank. 
I mean, it was the equivalent of the Central Bank of Argentina or Nigeria or uh, Venezuela uh, overprinting or, or misusing funds or whatever. As a venture capitalist, I turned down 300 centralized tokens. And I looked pretty stupid for a while there, but now it's looking a little better. Um, but the decentralized, but I was so much a believer in the decentralized tokens that I felt like that, that was so important that we, we not have one centralized force making a decision that we all have to live by. And so as a result of this, though, um, we've had USDC sort of lose its peg temporarily and then you know, really almost become too big to fail by moving out of SVB and, you know, um, and, and, and into, you know, uh, banks that are closer to the government. And in some ways, you know, USDC is, you know, I mean, some people would say it's almost a de facto, um, you know, CBDC at this point, um, and, and kind of, you know, too big to fail and it's in, in its own right. Um, you know, and, and again, thinking about what's between here and, and the kind of, you know, Bitcoinization of the world, um, you know, what, what do you see coming for for the banking system? I mean, is it, you know, more banks fail? Do we get kind of a, a clearing out of a certain kind of bank? And then we, we end up with, uh, you know, what, what are, I'm just curious what the next wave of this is. And then, you know, not, not that we can perfectly pr- predict the future, but then to maybe make some predictions on, you know, Bitcoin in, in the nearer and longer term. So I've always thought of those, um, those tokens that are pegged to fiat currencies as a bridge to, to a Bitcoin economy. Um, I think that that bridge uh, is still tied to fiat and still tied to a central bank and still centralized and still subject to the whims of some political force. And but I think it's getting people using digital money more. And that's a real positive. Um, The future of the banks could go one of two ways. Uh, The direction they're headed is toward more regulation, more government control and a big, huge, monstrous crash. But a government that trusts them and sets them free will allow that. Uh, those banks to succeed in this new world that is going to be, you know, more Bitcoin and cryptocurrency related. And uh, and right now the regulators are resisting uh, cryptocurrency. I know miners who have $140 million worth of Bitcoin and they can't put it in a bank. And because there were a few banks that were taking it before and now they're having great difficulty. So because those banks either went out of business or were forced out of business by governments or regulations. If the government makes a 180 here, um, then it'll be a much softer landing. And, uh, and the banks will continue to be great service providers to all of us. Uh, but they've got to uh, start to embrace cryptocurrencies. They've got to embrace them and allow the banks to operate with them because uh, without them, uh, we're going to see governments running our bank system. And you know how that could go. I mean, that could be, I know people who are just running from Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley Bank is now taken over by a government. So the government's now running Silicon Valley Bank. Um, I don't see a lot of depositors who want to stay there. Yeah. And, and I think, and, and so now I think coming for reality for a second, I understand your position, but I think it's unlikely that the government's going to do that, you know, going to do well, that except 180. That you might have, uh, you might have a different party. You know, usually one party goes in one way and that's the way they're going to go. And then the other party says, Hey, wait, something's wrong. And, uh, and that's, there is a beauty to a two party system. They're a little bit too far apart, but um, but there is a, some beauty to that because, you know, if one party says it's red, another one party says it's uh, purple. Yeah. You um, and if if one party says we've got to 
over-regulate or heavily regulate these people. And another party looks and says, no, we've got to deregulate. Uh, I, I think there is something to that. They always have differing points of view. So it may swing to another party, which would create a softer landing. And for all of us, for people, for depositors, for employees, for all the people of the world who operate in money of any kind, making a natural transition from the dollar to Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, I think is going to be a, it could be a smooth transition as it would be in a sort of, sort of a free market system, um, or it's going to be a like huge crash and burn. And, and I'll tell you why I think huge crash and burn if the government sort of take over all the banks and the banks are all so heavily regulated that you, you can't start a new bank. If the banking system just keeps being more and more regulated, um, we're going to have a time when I can buy my food, my clothing, and my shelter all in Bitcoin, or I can buy my food, my clothing, my shelter all in dollars. And, and I have a government over here with a central bank and a political system that might print a bunch more or whatever, and a system that we don't completely trust anymore, um, or a system that is built in software that is uh, solid and, uh, and decentralized and probably won't change very easily. Um, I think you're going to hang, and you know there are only 21 million Bitcoin, so you know that they're going to be worth more over time rather than the dollar that's going to be worth less over time. I think you're going to want to operate in Bitcoin. So that, that creates a major run on the banks. In fact, I was predicting this is horrible. I, I was out there talking about run on the banks before we actually had a run on the banks. But I thought the run on the bank was when I was going to be able to buy my food, my clothing, my shelter all in Bitcoin. Now I could, but it's still difficult. Not every retailer, not every e-tailer takes Bitcoin, but they will. Give me the scenario, um, kind of scenario A and B, like one is the, the crash course that you, that you say we we're probably currently on with more and more regulation. And, and B is the one where, where we get the 180. And, and what's, how does, what happens to Bitcoin in each of those two scenarios? So Bitcoin in A, you see a run on the bank and then you see the, the federal governments not being able to pay their own bills. So even T-bills aren't worth anything. And that's a run that's very dangerous. Um, and that will be if government continues to overregulate. Uh, if government makes a 180 and starts deregulating, you're going to, uh, oh, and then it would be a, um, you'd see the, the crash and a total spike in Bitcoin. Uh, the, uh, the deregulated scenario is one where the banks um, morph into something new and they evolve and they, they become um, a currency arbitrary. They, they move currencies fluidly through the system and, and the fiat, the dollar, all of the fiat currencies will slowly move out of use and the bitcoins will slowly move into use. I think that's probably better for humanity than the, the high regulation, government control, we know better than you do, so we're going to tell you all what to do. Uh, that scenario is um, is a government running right headlong into a wall. Um, the government that sets people free is a government that that adjusts to the new changes that are happening, and uh, and I think that's where I'm hoping that the world starts to go. So Bitcoin and um, Bitcoin could have would have a smooth transition into use okay. rather than a like have to have to run from the bank and go to Bitcoin. I mean, we saw a microcosm of what I think could happen with Silicon Valley Bank, where there was a 
a run to putting Bitcoin on ledgers. Exactly. And, and I can tell you from a business perspective, we saw it happen. You know, we saw, um, we saw the outflows. We saw the outflows come into ledgers. We saw the purchase of ledgers. We saw the setup of a ledger that might have been in your closet. You know, so, you know, and we've seen it, you know, over and over, over the past, uh, over the past 12 months. I think, you know, we're, we are, um, you know, for better or worse, you know, highly correlated with catastrophe. Yeah. Um, and that's really your point is that Bitcoin is highly correlated with catastrophe and will continue to be. And in the two scenarios, one, it grows incredibly quickly. The other, it grows more slowly. But in either case, it grows. Um, now, there's one other thing, and that's when the Silicon Valley Bank run happened. My team was really fast and was able to move uh, our investors money out. But not all our companies were that quick and they had a lot of money in Silicon Valley Bank. And they were coming to me with emergency loans, asking for emergency loans to make payroll. And they were saying, hey, we're going to miss payroll. And it could be some of the companies that we've invested in have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, and they were going to miss a payroll. And you can't, first of all, the board's responsible for that payroll. And, uh, and so what I've been telling CFOs um, first, I say just move it all to Bitcoin, but at least move two payrolls into Bitcoin so that you always have, you, you can always cover and keep the business running during a time of crisis where you can't access the money from the bank. Um, even having two banks, I mean, boy, that run on the Silicon Valley Bank almost became a run on First Republic, which became a run on whatever other banks there are out there. So it was the, that domino effect almost happened. And if the govern, government hadn't moved quickly at that time, we, we would have all been in Bitcoin by now. Uh, so I, that's the catastrophe I really don't want to see. It's interesting like, that you don't want to see that, even though your Bitcoin position is such that maybe you would. Because yeah, it, but you don't, you, don't want, you don't want to be rich with chaos around you. Right. You want, you want it to be a gradual transition. You want everybody to keep their job. You want everybody to have a, a good life. You want all those things to happen. Uh, so, no, it, sure. I, I mean, I am predicting $250,000 Bitcoin I thought it would happen before uh, June of this year. It might be, might be extended a little bit, but we're we're on a run now. It maybe it maybe it does happen. I'm pretty sure it happens, you know, by three months before the happening. So that's maybe a year from now. But um, it it might actually hit my prediction. We'll see. Wow. And I'm curious what you think. Under what scenario does Bitcoin not perform? You know, what could cause, you know, you've got two scenarios here, one where it goes click quickly, one where it grows slowly. You're also, as you said, invested in, in, in other digital currencies, you know, primarily decentralized ones. You know, what, what, what scenarios do you think it, it, it might that, you know, Bitcoin could, could not, you know, number well, go there up might be a better there might be some, something else. What, sure. What, what, there, what, what well, the, there might be a better uh, cryptocurrency that comes along. And there are other cryptocurrencies with a lot of engineers working on them and coming up with interesting new applications. But the best of those applications seem to be being ported to Bitcoin pretty quickly. So I don't think that's going to be the edge. I don't see that scenario. Uh, if I did, I'd hedge my bets. Well, I, don't I, see I am it coming. asking somebody sitting in front of me with a Bitcoin tie. Yeah. <laughs> under, under what scenarios might Bitcoin not perform you know, in the, yeah, in the northerly I mean, there direction. Are scenarios. I'm just curious. There are scenarios. Um, you know, they're a little bit doomsday scenarios, but the world usually improves every year. You know, it just moves along. Everything's better. The internet really accelerated that and pulled so many people out of poverty. Uh, and I think Bitcoin will do that too after it overcomes bad leadership. The weak leaders are the ones who want to tr control everybody. That's like President Xi and President Putin are weak, centralized, control people. It's also kind of good message for anybody who manages a team of people. Uh, trust them, give them a, a long-term goal and set them free.
so it is it, it's a good question because I've struggled with it because you know it's I'm, I'm heavily uh, invested into Bitcoin and that I don't think it's the banks and fiat that's going to create a, a downwards scenario for any kind of cryptocurrency. I think cryptocurrency is just better technology. Uh, they, you know, all the, they've put a hundred years of development work into our current banking system. It'll take another three or four years for the cryptocurrencies to uh, provide all the different services that are currently provided for fiat. Uh, but at that point, there will be no reason to still hold on to fiat currency, I don't think. I think it's probably um, some new startup with some new that's come up with another way to think about currency. I don't think it's going to be any of the Me Too currencies. I think Bitcoin will be the leader and stay the leader. Uh, but there are so the Me Too currencies, I don't I don't think will pass it. But if somebody thinks about currency in some new way, maybe it comes from the brain computer interface technology when you start like just sending messages brain to brain uh that that could change the way we all think about currency and how we and value how we value things yeah if i were framing what i just heard what i would say is you know i mean you've, you've got this twenty five thousand dollar asset that that you think you know goes to, to 250 you know over some reasonable time horizon there's, you know, sort of catastrophic risk, but the risk is asymmetric um, to the upside. And, and also this kind of recognition that, you know, you know, the way I always put it is that the Internet was a revolution of information. And what we're experiencing now is this revolution of value. And I think that harkens back to something that you said at, at the beginning, which is that really the stakes are higher in this transformation, right? Because, you know, the 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 stakes around value. And that's certainly what we believe here at Ledger. I feel it every day as somebody who really, you know, participated. I mean, I did digital music for 20 years, which was very disruptive. You know, I watched an industry go from 30 billion to 15 billion and then start to grow again with a new digital, um, you know, digital environment. But the stakes were lower, right? I mean, you know, if you were, if you were a member of that music business that got chopped in half, the stakes felt pretty high to you, but you know, the stakes for humanity, um, you know, we're much lower where I think, you know, the stakes in what we're, we're dealing with now are, are higher. So maybe as a, as kind of a, a final, you know, question or final thoughts around um, entrepreneurship, you know, in this world, in this, in this kind of revolution of value, um, you know, Ledger, you know, Ledger being, um, you know, something I know you're, you're passionate about. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, absolutely. We, we appreciate your, your support uh, and, but I mean, obviously, you're looking at the entire landscape of of companies. So I'm curious, you know, what you think about entrepreneurship in this in this revolution of value. Well, the I mean, I didn't go into it completely, but my, you know, I rode the internet wave very well, I guess. Um, but it transformed music, communications, information, gaming, entertainment, media huge industries, you know, hundreds of billions of dollar industries. But Bitcoin and the blockchain and smart contract have the potential to transform the biggest industries in the world. That is banking and finance and commerce and real estate and insurance and government. Those are the biggest, well, other than oil, those are the biggest, in, and it might even affect oil, biggest industries in the world. So as an entrepreneur, I would look at this opportunity and I'd say, wow, there, is, there was a huge change in all those fields, the media, entertainment, all those industries. But now we've got the trillion, $10 trillion industries, and they are, I mean, I guess I should be translating these things into Bitcoin now and not thinking in terms of dollar industries, but these are really, really very big industries. And as an entrepreneur, I can use this new technology to wedge into one of those big, huge industries. That's an amazing opportunity. And Ledger is remarkably well positioned for this new transformation. Ledger is uh, front and center. I mean, 
you can see it happening. You see it in spikes. You saw it when, when people lost confidence in, in FTX, there was a spike in ledger sales. And then uh, there was another spike in ledger sales when Silicon Valley Bank went under. Um, I know there was also a spike in Bitcoin price when, uh, when Cyprus went under the country. I think we are, it's going to go in fits and starts like that. Now, in a purely f- free market economy, it would probably be a much smoother transition, but it will probably go in fits and starts. You see the change happening in banks, and where are they going from there? They're going to put Bitcoin on ledgers. That is, you are the, the safest place to put value. And safest place to put money of any kind and uh, you know maybe nfts and other things and so i think ledger is incredibly well positioned in going forward in this next big wave um i think it might end up being one of the great companies of the world so um way to go keep thank up you. the good work well thank you thank and you i hope that, that this bank crash gets people to work even harder toward this Bitcoin economy. And I think they are. I, I'm seeing, you know, they were a little down in the dumps, but they just kept marching and the drumbeat kept happening. Uh, and now they're, uh, they're excited again. And they're really, they know that they've got a real purpose in life. They've got real direction. We need to save the world from the government banking system. We need to, you know, allow the world to continue to grow as an exciting, dynamic economy. Uh, And we need to see it uh, leave this uh, old world. And it's very difficult to leave an old world and move to a new world. It's a it's a tough transition. And uh, people who have power and want to cling to the past will create even more barriers to getting there. But eventually we get there, you know. So technology wins all wars. Technology is always, it can be suppressed, but it's always eventually let out. So much more to say on this, but we've, uh, I feel like I've taken enough of your time. Thank you for the support. I'm really um, happy to be able to talk to you at this moment with the, with the things happening in the world. I definitely think it's true, as you just said, that, you know, there was, you know, sort of, um, you know, a hangover feeling in the in, in the crypto industry and, and the, the events of the last couple of weeks have definitely renewed the purpose. And I think, you know, whether it's, um, you know, Celsius, uh, FTX or Silicon Valley Bank, I think the appreciation of self-custody. Um, is, you know, at an all time high, you know, two years ago when I was talking about self custody, this is a joke I always make people acted like I wanted them to quit eating meat and become a vegan. Um, but now they, they go, wow, yeah, I think you, I think that makes sense actually. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we, 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 we all, we all do keep going. We keep, uh, we keep innovating and, and trying to see around the corner. And I appreciate you sharing this. The question for me is what's between here and there? I remember the days between the iPod and the iPhone, and I remember we knew it was coming, but we even in 2007, it was difficult to predict when. And it was very difficult for the music industry because they were being disrupted, and they had to go through a change, and they eventually adapted. And but they were dragged there the kicking same, and screaming. Right, and I think the same thing is going to happen with governments and banks. And I'm kind of saying those two in the same sentence because it seems as though they are connected at the hip right now. And I think governments and banks are going to probably move in that direction, kicking and screaming, but they're going to have to move in that direction. And uh, I think we're all going to be way better off with a Bitcoin economy. Thank you. That's a great place to end it. I appreciate it, Tim. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. This content is provided for informational purposes only and is the sole expression of our opinion and should not be relied upon as legal, business, investment, or tax advice. Do your own research. Any loss or profit is your sole responsibility. Stay safe.